eight floors. I'm Special Agent Dave Sheldon of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I'm going to be your host on this gangbuster case. This is a necklace of 412 diamonds, value $64,000. It's only a small part of a haul made over a period of seven years by one of the most daring jewel thieves of all time, Arthur Bennett Burrell, alias the Lone Wolf. In just a moment, I'll tell you all about him. The case began on October 13th in the apartment of Arthur Burrell, Seattle, Washington. Hello. Oh, yes, Wendy. How are you, dear? No, tonight I'm busy, and tomorrow I'm going out of town for a couple of weeks. Well, it's business, honey. Of course it's important. Yes, I'll call you as soon as I get back. Bye. Women are suckers. a.m. Immediately following the $90,000 Merrill Jewel robbery, Burl returned to his apartment at 416 Fenton Avenue, Seattle, Washington, and prepared for an extremely painful operation. At the FBI field office in Seattle, Special Agent David Sheldon and John Randall had been assigned to devote their entire time to getting Arthur Burrell, the lone wolf. There was complete cooperation between the FBI and the efficient Seattle police. The prints match, don't they, Sheldon? Yeah, they're Burrell's all right. Who but Burrell could have pulled a jewel hole like that one last night? Well, after 3,000 miles, we're at least close to him. Burl must have been surprised on the job last night, or he never would have left his fingerprints on that jewel case. You know, I'm sending this to all law enforcement on the West Coast. Burl, 1929, drew six years state pen Walla Walla, escaped. Served five years Colorado State Prison from 1935. Drew 20 years in 1936 for assault with a deadly weapon. Sent to McNeil Island. Escaped by stealing airplane. That's something. Burl has operated from Florida to North Dakota and from New York to Seattle, holding charges on him from 13 cities. Modus operandi works through society girls. He gets himself invited to wealthy homes, then goes back later and burglarizes them. Frequents nightclubs, expensive restaurants, drinks only champagne. You know what that means. 
And my tuxedos and mothballs with a tear on the seat. <laughs> October 14th to November 16th, Special Agents Sheldon and Randall practically lived in fashionable nightclubs and restaurants. In their pocket was a mug picture of Arthur Bennett Burrow, the lone wolf. But it was taken seven years before at McNeil Island. Mug pictures, like passport pictures, leave much to the imagination. November 16th, 1.20 a.m., the Seaview Club, Seattle, Washington. Thanks for everything. You're very sweet. I wish tonight could go on and on and never stop. Maybe it will. I'm not sure whether that's Burl or not. Same size, general appearance. Looks like rich girlfriend. Champagne smooth. He's trying to get a waiter. Okay, get ready. Never mind the service. Yes, sir. You're not our waiter. Oh, no, sir. He, uh, he was taken off duty, sir. Charles Heitzig. Hmm? Charles Heitzig. Brute. We just had some. Oh, uh, oh, yes. Yes, sir. Didn't even know Charles Heitzig. Grandmother used to bathe in it, sir. <laughs> Cute. I owe you a lot, Wendy. Seattle could have been a lonely town. You made it home. Darling. Introducing me to all your friends, taking me to parties. I hope I fit it in. A man who'd clear his fingers off saving a kitten from a burning garage would fit in anywhere. Oh, no. They're all healed now. By the way, we have two invitations for the weekend. Oh? Saturday, Hope Burnwood's giving a dinner at the country club, and Sunday, the Boltons want us for cocktails and supper. No to the country club. Yes to the Boltons. The prints on her glass are very clear. No fingerprints on his at all. Just smudges. Are you sure? Must have burned his fingertips with acid. Mm-hmm. Just like Dillinger. Yeah, it looks suspicious. Let's go. We'll have a nice, quiet evening at the Boltons on Sunday. Beautiful home, good food, good company. I'm your grandmother, I suppose. I'll take it. Let's dance. Never mind the champagne. Let's dance. OK, honey. You name it. Easy does it. It's a pinch. Keep your hands clear of your pockets. Nice going, boys. Thanks, Burl. Burl? Burl, oh. We don't want any commotion. Let's go. You poise in for a big surprise. My fingerprints will prove I'm not Burl. They'll prove you used acid to try to burn them off. Let's go. What's the matter? What's happened? I guess I'm under arrest. Arrest? He's wanted in 13 states, ma'am. Joe Thief. So? I don't care what you've done. I'm with you. Anything you want. If it's money, I've got plenty. I'll wait for you. It's liable to be a long wait, ma'am. I don't care if it's 50 years. It's a gift, boys. Yeah. Personally, I think you'd make a better waiter. Yes, ma'am. There's a lot that would agree with you. I suppose you have a permit to carry this. You better come along too, ma'am. Maybe some questions. Come on, let's go. On April 17th, Arthur Bennett Burrow was sentenced to 10 years in the state penitentiary in Walla Walla, Washington, a maximum security prison. Number 15 is the disciplinary cell block. 
spur was placed in it, but he kept in the turmoil by constantly fighting. The other convicts were terrified of him. One night, a killer by the name of Lipper really went for him. Thanks, fella. Yeah. That's just what I've been looking for. I'll bet. A guy with enough guts to tackle me. Yeah, and they'd all like to put a ship in. Ah, uh, they're nothing but a yellow bunch of rats. I've been testing them out, and they crawl. You're the first one who dared come at me. Yeah, and I'm not through. I'm pretty famous for making breaks, you know. So what? I need a partner, and you're it. You ready? Why not? Louse it up or we'll draw the book. I never loves anything up. Relax. Got the snapshot? Yeah. <laughs> Don't let him make any noise. I will. The lights go out in less than a minute. Yeah. The truck leaves the yard in ten minutes. Yeah. Everything to the split second. Yeah. All right, fellas, time to check out. Hey, Charlie. Yeah? Before the lights go out, look at this. Picture my kid. Got it this morning. Very pretty. Gee, ain't she a living doll? Yeah? Yeah, she's a nice little kid, huh? What's it's her name? Jennifer. See the dog in the background? Yeah. No! Oh! Yeah, Charlie, she's a nice little kid, Charlie. Oh, yeah, she's a wonderful little kid. Truck compound. Keep still. We only got about six minutes. Right on schedule. Come on. Hold it. Wait till the guard passes. Yeah. Duck. The rest of the way will be easier alone. Huh? You go first. At 10.20 p.m., Burl got into the prison yard where the night truck was waiting. He grabbed some tools and plugged in a trouble light. So if he were seen, the guards would believe that he was a trustee and was greasing the truck. Eleven twenty p.m. The truck hadn't moved. Eleven thirty p.m. He couldn't hold on much longer. Seattle precincts. Wanted for escape from Walla Walla State Penitentiary, one Arthur Bennett Burrow, serving 10 years for burglary. Description follows. Five feet, 11 and a half inches. Medium brown hair, steel gray eyes, weight 165, teeth good, medium build, age 35. This is Sheldon, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Can I get two seats on the next flight to Chicago? Good. Oh, Sheldon. Just a minute. 
Yeah. When's it leave? Okay, I'll pick him up in ten minutes. Thanks. Anything new on Burl? The guard just died. The man answering Burl's description was seen by an airport guard in Chicago. Just got off the Seattle flight. The guard questioned him, but he broke and ran. So you're going to Chicago? Me? We? Oui. Chicago. From February 14th to September 26th, more big jewel burglaries were committed in Chicago than in any previous entire year. Arthur Bennett Burrow, the master jewel thief, was working again. September 28th, Burrow met Mary Clarkman. She was no match for Burrow. It was the same old game. Only this time he was thinking, a wife can't be made to testify against her husband. Could be a great help. Marry me. October 4th, 4 p.m. Burl and Mary Clarkman were married. October 27th. The apartment rented under the name of Mr. and Mrs. A.V. Wellfield. And now he'd started using her. He'd put the clock ahead about 45 minutes. He knew she loved him. And if he wanted her to, she would lie for him to the police. Possibly she wouldn't be able to lie well enough. With the watch set ahead, though, she'd really believe that he was with her, if he needed that alibi. I'm going out and walk around a little, honey. 11.15 now. I'll be back before 12. Okay. So every time Burl pulled a job, he'd set a watch or a clock ahead. So if he ever needed an alibi, his wife would honestly think he was with her. November 27th, 4.30 p.m. Burl was out. Jack London. Oh, Call of the Wild. Ho? Alexander Dumas? Hey. What's this one? you know. Let's have it. Let's have it. Sorry, kid. I'm just sorry I found out. I don't know whether you believe it or not, Mary, but I am sorry. I can't believe you. I'm leaving you. You're not leaving. Yes. No, you're not. Don't be a fool. I'm going home to Dad. I've got to have time to think this thing out. By myself. No, Mary, you can't walk out on me now. I won't let you because I love you. And it's too dangerous to me. But I'm going to. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I say you're not. Mary! No woman ever walked out on me in her life. My wife's not going to be the first. You won't shoot. Sure? Yes, I'm sure. 
Mary, for the last time, don't leave. No, I'm leaving. I'll make you a compromise. No. You can go back to your father for two days. I'll move out of here. You won't know where I'll be. I'll contact you in two days. You ought to come back and forget. And if I don't? I'll kill you. November 28th, 10.30 p.m. Mary Clarkman and her father have been up all night arguing as to their next move. But I love him, Dad. But can you live with him? Can you live with yourself? No. But then if you don't go back to him... I don't know, Dad. Well, whatever you do, I'm with you. You know that. But he'll know I told you. He might try to... Time's going fast, Mary. Sit down, Mary. It's no good, Mary. He's lied to you. He's tricked you. He's, his name is no more Wellfield than mine is. He's a thief. I mean, a crooked mind goes with it. Your life wouldn't be safe for a minute. He'd double-cross you the first chance he got. I love him, Dad. Everything you say is true, but, but I love him and I married him. He's sweet and thoughtful and, and fun to be with. He, he's what every girl dreams of, Dad, but this all seems like a dream. It just can't be me. But I do love him. I don't know whether I did right or not. Take my word, Mary. Don't know, Dad. continued to slip right into a federal penitentiary for life. He's still wanted by seven states, and it would take a statistician to count up the number of years stacked against him. A clever mind, but a warped mind. Now, in just a moment, a gangbuster clue about a person still at large and wanted by the police. Attention, attention to all citizens and police. Wanted for escape from Alcatraz. Ralph Rowe, 49, six feet tall, 170 pounds, gray eyes, scar above right eyebrow, several stars tattooed on left hand. Ralph Rowe, with at least eight arrests, was sentenced to 99 years at Alcatraz for bank robbery. Rowe escaped from Alcatraz and is now a fugitive. Approach with caution. Roe is dangerous and may be armed. 
Repeat, wanted for escape from Alcatraz. Ralph Rowe, 49, six feet, 170 pounds, gray eyes, scar above right eyebrow. Information concerning this clue. Notify your local police, the FBI, or gangbusters at once. Our next gangbusters case is just as authentic, direct from the police files. And on behalf of the police, we invite you to join us. Gangbusters, created by Phillips H. Lord. you have heard tonight was based upon police records, court records, and personal interviews. 